We know that famous uh, statement that he declared in Joshua 24 when he come down to the end of his days when he said to them, choose ye this day. But as they get more and more to establish themselves as um, a nation, uh, you will recognize that uh, the, the distance or the, or, or the separation of the church and state grew further and further. And certainly by the time they came around to uh, the king, uh, the first king, that of Saul, uh, had been appointed or anointed by Samuel. Uh, and so uh, um, Saul was no priest. Yep. And then you go to David. Uh, David was no priest. Yeah. Uh, they were called out of the line of Judah. And um, the priest was that of the Levites. So God had instituted um, the Levites. God had commanded Moses that he need to um, set the Levites apart, that they will do the service of the tabernacle or the service of the house of God. Having done that, there are individuals uh, of the throne of Israel that were not pleased with that. Yep. And therefore, they rebelled against Moses. And the portion of scripture that we have read, uh, they came uh, to Moses, they gathered their company, they came in their numbers, and they came uh, against Moses and uh, really uh, questioned Moses and uh, told Moses that he was wrong um, to deny them uh, that they need to be... Uh, uh, they need to be in the priesthood uh, as well. And so um, God had to deal with them uh, because of their disobedience or because of their rejection to the things of God. And so I want us to look at three things this morning. I want us to see the company that question God, I want to see, I want you to see their corruption, and then I want us to see their condemnation. Let us understand today that if we go against God, let us, let me say quickly that we cannot go against God and prevail. No individual will go against God and prevail. But the Bible tells us about their company. In verse number 2 of our text in Numbers chapter 16, it tells us that they rose up before Moses, and certain of the uh, children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. First, I want you to recognize that they were plenty. Yeah? They were not a handful uh, of people, but they were plenty. The scripture tells us that there were 250, yeah? But there were not 250 people. There were 250 princes of the assembly, which means to say that uh, there were 250 leaders, yeah? Um, so they represented a quite large sector of the population, so you had a great number of people that is going up against uh, the things of God or the man of God. And I don't know where you are today, but certainly when you look at our society, uh, you would see that there is a number of people that will go up against the man of God. And not necessarily the man of God, but they go up against thus saith the Lord. Because it's not that they were going up against Moses, but they were going up against what Moses said, that God said. Yeah? So they were going up against God. Let us see that there were plenty, but that they were popular. They were popular. Uh, where did we get at? Well, it says that they were uh, 250 princes. And therefore, what was happening is that uh, these princes were leaders in the society, yeah, they were not bringing their own opinion, but they were bringing the perceptions and the mindset of the people. Here's what it says in verse number two. 
And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly. But what was the next statement? Famous in the congregation. And so uh, these were individuals that were uh, of repute. These were individuals that were, in the people's eyes, good standing. Uh, they were famous. And therefore, they represented uh, the, 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 the cross-section of the people's minds, uh, their wills. And so, um, these people were popular, meaning they were men of renown. The Bible tells us that. It says, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Which means to say that they were men of honor. They were men of character. They were men of authority. That was coming to Moses, the man of God, to question, to go against, thus saith the Lord. Again, if we were to take a careful look at our society, it's not different. They are important people, they are famous people that are going up against, thus saith the Lord, not agreeing with what God says. How do you know God said that? Did God speak to you alone? Because I don't think that God said that. It's not, it's not a matter of what you think. It's not a matter of what we feel. It's a matter of understanding, thus said the Lord, and God have an avenue. Can I say God have an avenue to speak? And Paul had to deal with uh, the people in the Corinthian church. He says how it is that when you meet, that every one of you have a psalm. God revealed this to me last night, Pastor, and I need to say it. Uh, every one of you, Paul said, had a psalm. Every one of you want to be able to testify and share and all that kind of stuff like that. He said, no, 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 it's not so. It's not so. Yeah? If God said, if God institute and God said the leaders and the pastors and all that kind of stuff like that, who, 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 who then he would speak to? So it can't be that when you have service that uh, I got a vision last night and it's important that I share my vision to the church. Uh, it, Paul says it don't work so. God is a God of order and decency. And so things need to be in order. I remember uh, one lady we were up uh, on um, Freedom Street there. Uh, corner of Freedom Street and the Southern Main Road and uh, service. Um, we had just like the normal Sunday school and so she came in and sat. All fancy dress and nice color and everything. Uh, deck from head to foot. And she sat in the Sunday school and then as we finished the uh, Sunday school and we were about to start service, she uh, came to me. She said, are you the pastor? I said, yes. She said, I would like to share. The first time I see the lady here, she said, I would like to share. I say, well, let me know what you want to share. She said, well, God gave me a vision last night. I want to share with this church. And I said, well, I'm the pastor. If God have a vision for this church, he will tell me. He will get that vision to me. I don't know what you come in with. You understand? And she said, okay. And she sat down, and by the time we sing the first song, she get up and leave. Well, that's fine, yeah? But listen, they came to Moses. Oh, what are you talking about? God said this. Uh, 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 we don't agree with that. Yeah? It's not for us to agree with. It's not for you to agree with. It's for God to say what it is. It's for us to abide. You see, uh, we don't tell God. <laughs> if we tell God, then we will be God. We will, we will be bigger than God. We don't tell God. Yeah? Uh, we have to listen to God. And so, yeah, there were plenty they were popular. But I want you to see their position as well. Uh, verse number 3. So they came to Moses and a whole lot of them and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto him. So this is their position. They are laying their position before him. He take too much upon you. Are you... <laughs> you set yourself above the congregation, above the people. You take too much upon you. It says... Uh, um, he says, seeing all the congregation are holy. So, 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 are you saying that you're more holy than us? You take too much upon you. You have set yourself. 
All of us are holy. And that's what they are saying. And therefore, how you come above us, yeah? How you could come and say that God said this, yes? It says, if you read the entirety of verse number 3, it says, And they gathered themselves together against Moses, against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much. So the, con the congregation is saying, or the people are saying, that God against Moses is saying that, Listen, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift you up yourself above the congregation of the Lord. So they're questioning Moses. How can you lift yourself above the people of the congregation of the Lord? Well, it's not Moses who is lifting himself up. It's God who has given him and elevated him to that position. It is God who said that he is leader. Listen. How much head a snake has? How much, how much head you have? There could only be one. And if God put a head, then that's the head. All the fingers are not head. And therefore, it's God. You look and, and see in terms of what they were saying, and in, in today's world, it will seem plausible. But all of us are holy, because all of us are the people of God, we are His children. So all of us are holy. Uh, you take too much upon yourself. You, you're trying to elevate yourself above us. All of us are holy, and all of us will uh, see, and all of us will be in the same position. And again, in today's world, that is plausible. In today's world, yeah, that makes sense. In today's world, we have a good argument. We have a good case. That is true. That is so. Yeah? Yeah. Um, But can I say that human wisdom doesn't mean to say that it is sensible before God. Human wisdom without God knowledge and understanding seems sensible. That is, if you're arguing a case without facts, then what you're saying might seem sensible. But when put against the facts, well... It don't have any weight. And so, all of them are holy. That's, that's human reasoning. It may seem sensible without understanding uh, the facts of God. Did God say that they were unholy? By like God putting Moses in charge or putting Aaron and his sons in charge to be priests, does that say that they were unholy? No, God is simply... God is simply saying that, listen, these are the people that will perform a certain function and a certain role. That don't mean to say that you are unholy. Their company, but watch their complaint. Sorry, watch their corruption. The Bible tells us that they rose up, verse number two, that they rose up before Moses. And again, rising up before Moses was not a personal thing with Moses. They were really going up against God. And we first of all see their diso disobedience. It's God who had called Moses. So when they disobeyed what instructions God gave Moses to consecrate Aaron and his sons, then what they were really doing is being disobedient to God. Moses was God called. And therefore, Moses was simply saying, Thus saith the Lord. In today's world, today's society, there are people that will not abide by the word of God. There are people who are not interested in thus saith the Lord. They go on their own perception. They go on uh, what they think sounds right, looks right. Moses certainly did not exalt himself. When you read scripture and when you understand a little bit about Moses, Moses was a very humble individual. Moses was termed the servant of God. Therefore, they were really refusing to abide by what God said. Moses addressed that in verse number 11 of our text. 
He says, For which cause both, ye, both thou and all thy company that are gathered together against the Lord. Not gathered against Moses, you're gathered against the Lord. He says, And what is Aaron that he murmur against him? Aaron is who God appointed to be the priest. And you will murmur against Aaron. It means to say that you're murmuring against God. Not only we see that they were disobedient, but they were dissatisfied. They were not satisfied with the things of God. So God instituted, God placed his manservant there. God put his priest there. They want to accept that. So Korah and others came to Moses, not being satisfied with how God have put things and not being satisfied with the privilege that we have. But it's interesting when you understand the people that make up this company. In verse number one it says, Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohat, that's important, the son of Levi. So Kohat, which would be uh, the father or grandfather of Korah that came, they were the son of Levi. And so the Levites were called to be in the priesthood. But remember that they're complaining to Moses, yeah? about Aaron and his sons, because Aaron and his sons were the, 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 the high priests. Yeah? So they want to be uh, the high priest. Again, can I say there could only be one head? There's only one high priest. Yeah? There are not several high priests. There's one. And when that one dies or whatever, uh, then there's a, 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 a process, and then there, there, there's one in line. Yeah? that have to come, but they come from the sons of Aaron. Yep. Now, Kohat, yeah, uh, they are the servants in the tabernacle. They have a duty, and they have a function as well to perform. But um, they are not, what I should say, satisfied with their role. So, Korah, yeah, is the cousin, yeah, of uh, the sons of Levi, yeah. He, uh, Korah and his children are cousins to the priests or the high priests and all the generation that will come of the high priests. For time's sake, but if you read uh, Numbers chapter 3, uh, you'll see uh, where God uh, had instituted and God had outline the high priest and also the servants, those people who will be serving the, the tabernacle, doing the service of the tabernacle. Well, um, in verse number 9 and verse number 10, the Bible says, and Moses said to them, seem it, it, but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel had separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. So here's what was happening. God had said to the people, separate the tribe of Levi, yeah, that they do the service of the Lord. The rest of the tribes had different functions and they go on to do their work and this and that and a whole lot of different things. Yeah? But the tribe, of, the tribe of the Levi had to see about that their work, their service was the tabernacle and all the things that pertain to the tabernacle. So for example, remember they were journeying through the wilderness. So as they moved from place to place, yeah, uh, the, the Levites, the, the children of Levi, uh, had to do uh, various functions concerning the tabernacle. One, they would carry the tabernacle. 
they would carry the, the utensils, the different altars and basins and all that kind of stuff like that, which they would use. Uh, and um, uh, they would carry the Ark of the Covenant of God. So there's a whole number of stuff, yeah? Uh, they would uh, play the instruments and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, they would do a number of stuff. However, the high priest, yeah? The one that will go and uh, offer uh, the, 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 the sacrifices and all that kind of stuff unto God, the high priest was of the son of Aaron, yeah? His cousins, yeah, or their cousins uh, would do the rest of the stuff in the tabernacle. So here's what Moses said. So uh, their complaint was, well, we want to be high priests, yeah? Why, should, why sh shouldn't we be the high priests? And Moses said unto them, listen, so you think it's a small thing that God have called you to serve in the tabernacle. You want to be the high priest, yeah? So God had called you to serve in the tabernacle. What about the other tribes who God didn't call to serve in the tabernacle? What will, them, what will they say then? What will be their argument, yeah? You are privileged, yeah? To be in the house of God, you are privileged to be used by God. And yet to you, it's a small thing. You want to be the high priest. That's what Moses is saying in verse number 9 and 10. Read it now. Seem it, it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel had separated you from the congregation of Israel, you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he had brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek thee the priesthood also. So you're not satisfied, yeah? Unless you don't have the priesthood, yeah? You think it's small, yeah? It's... And so I'm saying that they were not just disobedient, but they were dissatisfied people as well. But um, so here's, here's the mix, yeah? Here is, here is the mix. When you look in verse number 18, and again, you understand um, the people yeah, that came to Moses. One, you had Korah, and uh, it says, of the son of Korah, the son of Levi. Yeah? And then you had another set with him, yeah? which is Datan and Abiram, the son of Eliab, and On, the son of P P P Pilate, sons of Reuben. Now, that's the other part. Yeah, that's the, the next half. That's the next set of them, yeah? The son of Reuben. That have some, some significance as well. Reuben was the firstborn. And so, uh, the firstborn had some, some rights, yeah? Of course, uh, the lineage would go down to the firstborn. So, the firstborn... Uh, grew up with the understanding that they would take over their parents and their father's legacy. Yeah? Um, but that is a right that uh, that is a right that goes that, let me say, that accompanies responsibility. Yeah? Um, and one should not go away thinking that uh, because they are the firstborn, that they have a God-given right um, to certain things. It ought to be the other way around, that as the firstborn, they need to realize that they have some responsibilities for the things that have been entrusted to them. You have a whole religion and a whole number of people that have established and go on the premise that as a firstborn, that that conveys some rights onto them that regardless of whatever happened, uh, that that is their right. In case you're into... Uh, pick up on that yet, you had a, a firstborn in their mind of Ishmael. And they think that because Ishmael was the firstborn, 
that the right that all Abraham's right had passed on to him. Yeah? Even so that they said that when the sacrifice was being made, and Abraham went to sacrifice his son, that he would have had to sacrifice his firstborn. So it was not Isaac which was tied and bound in their religious book, whatever that is. Yeah? They have that as Ishmael being bound and because he is the firstborn. So the sacrifice that they had to make, remember, is the firstborn lamb. Yeah? The male, the firstborn. So he was the firstborn being sacrificed and a whole generation gone down with that premise of the firstborn. But a, the, the firstborn, though it conveys some rights and privileges, with rights and privileges comes great responsibility. And where that fails, God removes the right and privileges. So, for example, Reuben being the firstborn, but because of his sin, God says, no, 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 not you. He skipped Reuben and went to Levi. He called Levi, you know, and, 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 and from the, 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 the tribe of Levi, God called to be the priest. So you had two sets of disgruntled people coming, uh, influencing the rest of the congregation in Israel. One who feel, but because of my natural birthright, that I should get this like, like, like Esau. My birthright! At first! Yeah, because of his sin, God says, no, I hate him. Not because that God set out to hate him, because God knows his mind and how he is. He said, but Jacob I love. Because Jacob have a different mind towards God. Yeah? Uh, Esau is operating based upon, I born first. So therefore he need to give me. And even today, there are people in their family household who feel, I born first, so this house belongs to me. Want to run out the rest of them. This is mine. And a whole host of stuff going on. But God says, I don't operate so. Yeah? If I give you a right and a privilege, you've got to understand that's a privilege that I have given you. And with that, I'm, call, I'm calling for responsibility. So those fellas gang up and come to Moses. Yeah? So they were disobedient. They were dissatisfied. And they were, they were detractors. Yeah? They gathered themselves in verse number 3. And they gather themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. What they were doing is they were influencing others as well. Yeah? Trying to show and demonstrate, listen, uh, the priesthood really belongs to us. Uh, how dare Moses come and say he's speaking in the name of the Lord. Yeah? And uh, putting uh, Aaron and his sons, uh, one, they are not the first and they don't deserve it. Yeah? So, we see the company, their corruption, going against God. And thirdly, this morning, their condemnation. Again, you cannot go against God and uh, continue. You may talk for a while, but you don't talk forever. You may exist for a while, but you're not going to exist forever. You might influence people for a time but not for all time. And so God would eventually step in. If there's one thing today I want you to get at early is that, listen, God will step in. God may allow people to say things. God may allow people to do things. But God in his timing steps in. And so, when God steps in, God takes over and God punishes. Their punishment, first of all, was displayed. And God will punish people to be seen God will punish people that his punishment will be visible. So the Bible tells us in verse number 5 
And he spake unto Korah and all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his. The Lord will show. In other words, Moses is saying, I don't have to do that. The Lord will show. Because again, they're not coming against Moses. Technically, they're going against God. Yeah? People go against the man in an excuse because they don't want to say they're going against God. So they say they're going against the man. But of course, Moses knew that, listen, if he is doing what God says, then it's not me. God told Samuel that early. Yeah, when Samuel was complaining about the people uh, wanted a, uh, um, a leader and a king or whatever, and they, they rejected Samuel, God tells Samuel, Samuel, listen, stop crying uh, on yourself. Yeah? They have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. Yep. So Moses said to them that God will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he had chosen will he cause to come near unto him. So God will display, God will show, God will make an open show as to who uh, are his. The punishment was displayed, but the punishment, understand, was divine. It was God that was doing it. Verse number 16, just for time's sake, in verse number 16, And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. So all of you come tomorrow, yeah? And you come and put yourself before God. In verse number 17, And take every man his censer, and put incense in uh, them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. So Moses said, All of you, come bring your censer. Uh, Moses, uh, Aaron and his sons will bring their censer, and they'll put incense in it, and they'll go and burn it before the Lord. And verse 18 says, And they took every man his censer and put fire therein and laid incense therein and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle against um, the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. So get the picture. Um, Korah and his 25 uh, 250, 100 men, uh, all of them, 250 men, all of them, uh, Korah got, got with their congregation, with all their supporters behind them. Uh, they came to the congregation of the house of the Lord, the tabernacle uh, of God. Uh, there they met uh, Aaron and his sons with their censers and they guarded. Yep. Verse 19. It says that the Lord appeared unto them. Yep. Uh, the glory of the Lord. That speaks about the smoke uh, in that place. So God's punishment, yeah, was uh, displayed. It was divine. They saw the glory of the Lord. Yeah. And then his punishment was devastating. In verse number 20, the verse to going down. It tells us, and the Lord spake unto Korah, sorry, unto uh, Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. I want you to see some, some things as I go through. I wouldn't be able to explain everything and uh, always pull uh, references, but uh, there are some things that I will just pause and show you as a picture of the church and what is happening today. Yep. It says, Separate yourselves. Why? God is going to bring destruction. Yeah? Separate yourselves from them. And again, I'm saying, church, you've got to understand you know, this life of separation. Uh, listen, if we find ourselves um, uh, where we are not, when, when licks start to share, you might get some too. I understand that. Yeah? Uh, if you are wrong when the whip coming down and you're in place, you might, you might get lashed too. So don't be there. Yeah? But the other thing uh, for the church and understanding the church, especially as we live in these times, yeah? that when the uh, destruction comes, remember we talk about a seven-year tribulation and other kind of stuff like that, the church will not be there. 
Yeah, there's a separation. So there are some who believe that the church will go through the, tri the tribulation and all that kind of stuff like that. And no, 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 pardon. Yeah, God always separates his people uh, when he's about to uh, bring destruction. Remember a lot? Yeah, even though he was a, 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 a what we'll say, a messed up child of God. Yeah, a living in sin and all kind, all kind of stuff like that. Yet God sent some angels to bring him out because God is going to destroy, yeah, the, 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 the unbelievers, yep. So God says, listen, separate yourself from that company because I'm going to deal with them, yep. Um, so that's verse number uh, 21. In verse number 22, and they fell upon their faces and said, oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and will thou be wrought with all the congregation. So understand Moses and Aaron, yeah? Uh, they know um, they know God yeah and when God says separate yourself because I'm going to deal with them they know what's going to happen so they start to beg God the same people who wanted to kill them the same people who said to Moses you take too much upon yourself Moses is now begging for them God ease them up do you know um, do, 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 do come down upon them yeah and the Lord spake unto Moses, verse number 23, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Yeah? Listen, when God is going to discipline, yeah? Listen, we beg, we, we intercede because, listen, it's, it's people, it's loved ones, it's acquaintances that Moses and them, and Moses knows because of their ignorance and their stupidity. But when God is about to discipline, he will discipline. Yeah? You move. And so, he says, get you up. Yeah? And Moses rose up, verse number 25, and went on to Dathan and Abiram, the elders of Israel, and the elders of Israel followed him. And they spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. So, Moses now appealing to, the, to his supporters. Or you leave them, fellas, because they're going to be destroyed. God is going to de uh, dis destroy them. And touch not, nothing of theirs, lest they be consumed, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So you don't want to be part of them because you're going to be... Uh, thing. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan... And Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little ones. And Moses says, uh, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord had sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord had not sent me. So Moses is saying, Listen, uh, God is going to do something. And if these fellows die a natural death, well then, God didn't send me. But if God do something, if they die in a way that have never been seen before, then you will know that uh, God had sent me and these are the things that he said. He says, verse number 30, But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow uh, them up with all that are put in unto them, and they go down quick into the pit. Then he shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Verse 31 says, And it came to pass as, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder, and uh, the, the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses, and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods, they and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. That word pit, interestingly, that word pit, and the same word is translated in the New Testament as hell. So that's, that's where these guys went into. Yeah? Uh, straight into hell. Yep. The Bible says that all that was pertaining to them perish. Yep. Their children and their wives and whatever. Yep. Can I say that God, 
God could do. Without men who think too much of themselves. God don't need us if we think too much about ourselves. One may ask this morning, what's, what's the significance for us? I've heard the story, I've read the scripture. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, Dayton and these guys and uh, Korah, they came against Moses and we knew of the first, not earthquake, because there's an earthquake in the, uh, uh, in the book of Genesis when they were building the tower, Babel, or Babel. So it's not the first earthquake, but it's the first time that the earth opened up yeah, and swallowed people. So we may know, but what does that have to do with us? Well, let us understand and remember I try to make some reference to where we are today. Let us understand and appreciate that, listen, we have all disobeyed God. So don't just think about Korah, Abiram, Dayton. We've all disobeyed God. But disobeying God was not why the, the, the earth opened up and swallowed them and they ended up in hell. Why that happened is because they refused God's divine authority. They rejected it. Even when Moses came and explained to them, they refused God. And they rejected the divine authority, thus saith the Lord. We need to be careful of resisting divine authority. Listen, sometimes... Sometimes we know. <laughs> How do we know? God says in his word, sometimes God sends his manservant. His manservant is not saying unless you're in some cult. Manservant is not saying anything that the scripture isn't saying. And we, need to, we need to understand when God speaks to us, we need to understand divine authority. When God places his man there to speak his word, to save us from some calamities, from some destruction that might be ahead. Beware of resisting divine authority. Beware of resisting a divine call. Sometimes God place a burden on us to do things. Don't think it meager. Don't see it as you serve in man. See it as you serve in God. Watch this. Korah and Abiram and Dayton obviously uh, saw the, what they were doing. They were impressed more upon, they, 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 they were taken up more about how men saw them. They were taken up upon what they were doing in the eyes of man rather than in the eyes of God. So they were not satisfied. In their mind, it was meager that I do a service. You see, the highest position was the high priest in the earthly realm. And therefore, they were interested in how they were viewed by the rest of the society and not necessarily by how they were viewed by God. 
You see, if I understand that God calls me to do something, then whatever that he called me to, that is important. <laughs> Whether it's important to me or you, it's important to him. And he have called me. It's a privilege that he has called me to do his work. And whatever that is, it is his work. Whether it's to be the prime minister or the prime cleaner, it's his work. And, 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 and whether it's not prime at all, it's just cleaner. I'm a cleaner for God. I'm a servant for God. I am whatever for God. Then I don't see man. Then I don't have a problem because I see God. And I'm saying beware of, of trivializing the divine call of God upon our lives. That we are not satisfied with what God has called me to do. One, I could ignore and not answer when he called. And secondly, I could, I, I, I could put myself for service but not want to serve in the capacity that he wants me to serve because I am thinking I want to do something better. So, you know, like we talk about a little bit in this uh, Sunday school, people, um, uh, people are looking for nice gifts, better gifts, you know. So, I don't want to do the, I don't want to have the gift of administration to be helping around and doing stuff, organizing stuff. Nah, I want to have the gift of tongues so people will see me and hear me. I want to have the gift of healing so I could do something and everyone, oh. Hey, you see what I'm at? Yeah? So, yeah, it's, it's understanding and appreciating the call of God, recognizing this is of God, and whatever you've placed upon me, whatever you've burdened me with to serve him in whatever area, hey, to God be the glory. So we need to be to beware of, of again, divine authority. Know when God's speaking. Secondly, um, what you have placed upon me to do. It's not meager. It's not trivial. Yeah? As long as it is for God, then he needs to receive the praise, the honor, and the glory. But here's, here's the problem. And here's where we can find ourselves. The scripture says, God is a consuming fire. The scripture tells us it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the living God. So we don't want to find ourselves opposing. We don't want to find ourselves contrary. But what do we do? We being sinful, I said we are all sinners, but God want to help us. But God want to help us, but will we accept the help of God? Moses tried to intervene. Uh, people couldn't care less about Moses. They tried to put themselves up. Here's what the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape? What are we going to do? We are sinners. God is making a way God is trying to be gracious to us. But how shall we escape if we neglect the things that God is doing? So even as a child of God, uh, first of all, let me start from the position of a sinner. As I said, all of us have sinned. And if you have never come to the place put in your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Listen, because you have sinned, there's destruction that is awaiting you. There's hell. God going to open one day, yeah, the earth, you're going to fall, yeah, into the pit. Yeah? 
place, the place that is in the center of the earth where it is a bottomless pit, you'll always be falling. The place where the fire is not quenched. He's a consuming fire. But God has made a way that we can escape. But how shall we escape if we're going to neglect what God has done for us and the grace that God is offering us? That sinner, saint. How shall we escape if we're going to neglect the things that God has placed there for us? How shall we escape if we're going to neglect the word of God, the man of God? How can we escape if we're going to reject the divine call of God upon our lives? to serve him, to be where God wants us to be. How are we going to function? I want you to notice something, and we'll close it with this. So, God had consumed Abiram, Korah, Dathan, and their families. But remember there was a congregation. Remember there was a congregation that was behind them. Moses had begged them to depart from these fellows. And it would seem as though they may have departed physically. But spiritually, that didn't seem to be the case. So when the earth opened up and um, when the earth opened up and swallowed them, yep, the matter did not end there. Come with me to verse number 41. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. But you have just seen God have demonstrated, He displayed to them Moses and Aaron, they survived. The earth opened up and killed these men who claimed to be. And the, the people, listen, listen. You can do what to a man. Man have choice. Eh? And he will choose to believe what he wants to believe. And you can't do nothing about that. You choose to believe what you want to believe. And so regardless, the people still the next day, they say, but Moses, you kill the children of God. And it came to pass, verse 42, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it. So they saw God came down again. And the glory of the Lord appeared, and Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment... And they fell upon their faces. Aaron and Moses fell upon their faces. What? They started to beg God again for those people. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and, and, and put fire therein from off the altar and, and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold the plague was uh, begun upon the people and he put on incense and make an atonement for the people and stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. If you understand what is going on there, Aaron is making intercession for the people because God is destroying them because of the evil, the wickedness. I'm saying there's need for you and I to run quickly and be an intercessor. 
they stubborn, they harden. But as God give us ability, don't, don't hold no grudge against them. Yeah? Moses tell Aaron, go quickly, go quickly. Go and put incense in, in, in the oil. Run quick. Make an intercession for them. Yep. And the Bible tells us, and he stood between the living and the dead. If he wasn't there, all of them dead. Yeah? And the Bible says, Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 besides them that died about the matter of Korah. So, yeah, counting them fellows with Korah and his family. After that, 14,000. And, and it's a good thing that Aaron ran because the numbers would have increased. There would have been more. We don't know what more that was. And then the Bible says, And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Listen, beyond you and I, remember I said that all of us have sinned. Beyond you and I, I want you to see an intercessor. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? We have an intercessor, which is Jesus Christ. The fact remains is that, listen, as good as you and I feel we are, but the fact remains that, boy, sometimes we mess up and we get on the wrong side of God. And thanks be to God that he has given us Jesus Christ to run that when the father said, hmm, he run quick. <laughs> Go and stand between us and him. That we're still alive. That we're here this morning alive because of what Christ stood and begged God for us. Oh, listen. He stand between living and dead. He's the reason today I'm alive, and he's the reason why spiritually I'm alive and not dead. I need to understand, as I said, the great privilege. Listen, God has given you and I some privileges. We are not deserving. Let's be fool ourselves and think we are not deserving, but God has chosen to save you and I. He has chosen to bless. He has chosen to give us some things. And listen, don't feel at all that you, you deserve it, that he owed that to you. And therefore, with that ought to come an awesome responsibility upon the child of God to do some things, my God, to praise the Father and the Son for what He does and He continues to do for you and I today. Shall we all stand? With every head bow and eye closed today. Oh, the foolishness of God speaking to you. Has God ministered to your soul through this message? There are some things that you need to settle right now. The matter of sin. Have you received forgiveness of your sins today? God want to forgive you. Jesus Christ died on a cross to pay for your sins. And that's the only way that you can have your sins forgiven today. And that is to put your faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. A simple prayer. Just by having faith in what Christ has done for you would cause you to have forgiveness of sins. If you like that today, you can say the simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I cannot save myself. But I believe that you sent Christ Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. And to the best that I know how, I'm trusted in him that I would receive forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. For I ask it in Jesus' name. You pray that simple prayer. We are so glad today. We know that God has forgiven you. We will encourage you to join with us 
the next time that we meet, we would love to see you, hear from you, and allow you to grow in His grace as you fellowship with the saints and around the Word of God. Thank you again for viewing and see you for the next time appointed.